Hello. Today is August the 29th, 2020. We are now 166 days into 15 days to flatten the curve. This week, I would like to talk about the emotional consequences of all the lockdowns and shutdowns that have happened over the last 166 days into 15 days to flatten the curve. These are the things that are not normally talked about when you hear about the rising cases, the number of cases, because we test more people than any other country in the world. Yes, we're gonna have more confirmed cases, but the good news is, as far as from the big C, we see the death rate going down in, compared, in comparison with the number of cases. So the actual death rate of the big C itself is much lower than what we anticipated many months ago. I would like to share with you this video from a doctor who talked about the consequences and was censored on Facebook and YouTube many times. His videos were deleted but he was talking about the real world con consequences of these lockdowns and shutdowns and isolations of the people of our country. Uh, Dr. Dan Erickson, uh, Dr. Gold asked me to talk about the lockdowns, how effective they were, and do they cause anything non-financial? They always talk about the financial, but we're, you have to realize that lockdowns, we haven't taken a $21 trillion economy and locked it down. So when you lock it down, it causes public health issues. Our suicide hotlines are up 600%. Our spousal abuse, different areas of alcoholism are all on the rise. These are public health problems from a financial lockdown. So we have to be clear on that fact that there is, it's not like you just lock it down and have consequences to the people's jobs. They also have consequences, health consequences at home. So we're, you know, uh, we're talking about having a little more of a measured approach, a consistent approach. If we have another spike, you know, coming in cold and flu season, let's do something that's sustainable. What's sustainable? Well, we can, uh, we can socially distance and wear some masks, but we can also open the schools and open businesses. So this measured approach I'm talking about isn't made up. It's going on in Sweden. And their deaths are about 564 per million. UK full lockdown, 600 deaths per million. So we're seeing that the lockdowns aren't decreasing significantly the amount of deaths per million. Some of their Nordic neighbors have less deaths for a variety of reasons I don't have time to go into today. So what my quick message here in a minute or two is just that we need to take an approach that's sustainable. A sustainable approach is slowing things down, opening up schools, opening up businesses, and then we can allow the people to have their independence and their personal responsibility to choose to wear masks and socially distance. As opposed to putting edicts on them, you know, kind of uh, controlling them, let's empower them with data and let them study what other countries have done and make their own decision. That's what I'd like to share. Thank you. During June 24th through the 30th, 2020, the CDC reports, U.S. adults reported considerably elevated adverse mental health conditions associated with the C-19. Younger adults, racial ethnic minorities, essential workers, and unpaid adult caregivers reported having experienced disproportionately worse mental health outcomes, increased substance use, and elevated suicidal ideation. Moreover, the CDC reports during late June, 40% of U.S. adults reported struggling with mental health or substance use. Anxiety and depression symptoms, 31%. Started or increased substance use, 
13%. Trauma, stressor-related disorder symptoms, 26%. And the percentage of people who seriously considered suicide in the United States was 11%. These are staggering numbers. Staggering. Over the last couple of months, I've seen two people leave and pass away, and not from the big C. I truly believe that these never ending lockdowns and isolations definitely played a big part in people's um, in people being gone I just want to say if you have men in your life if you have brothers fathers uncles and friends check on them to make sure that they are doing okay let them know that you love and care about them and that this season will pass Take time to reach out to them. And finally, I would like to say, if you need somebody, call me. If you need to talk to somebody, call me. If you need to reach out to somebody, call me. I'm here for you and I, I love and I care about you. God loves you and I love you. So if you need somebody and I'm serious, call me you need somebody to talk to, I'm here for you. And that's my commentary for the week.